Happy Friday, everybody. We're back at it. It's another beautiful day here in North Dakota. I hope it's nice wherever you are. So, uh, I mentioned in a previous video, I need to get some new uh, roller, pinion roller parts, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, made. And I have a friend who might be able to machine some stuff up for me. Um, I'll happily give him credit if this all ends up working out, but for now I'll keep that under wraps. Um, you know who you are though. Uh, so he wanted some more pictures of the parts, so I'll do one better. I'll take a little video of, I cleaned up a couple here, and kind of show you what I got going on. So this is the axle, you know, it goes in the end of the, like that. So these slide in these holes here. It's like a, a light press fit. I had to drive them out with a hammer and a punch. But they're designed to to come out. Um, they are drilled and tapped on the ends and counter sunk just a little bit with a 3A16 for a 3A16 bolt. Oh, about, I don't know, that far in or so. Um, and then, you know, so that goes in and then this, uh, big washer is what tighten up that nut and it goes against the square head there. And that's what keeps it, keeps it in. You know, it's not really the press fit that keeps it in there. That's your retaining uh, part, but it is a, a pretty, pretty snug fit in there. Um, so it's, uh, you know, start with the, what is that? Uh, about a three quarter. Yeah, about a three quarter or so head. Um, square stock. And then it's turned down to, what is it, like 5 ace or something? 625, yeah, about 5 ace shaft. It should be straight shaft all the way, but they're worn. Whoops, better show you what I'm doing. Should be a straight shaft, but it's worn. Um, then there's an oil hole from the inside to here. So it's drilled and tapped to that halfway point where that roller rides with a, what size is this? Five thirty seconds hole in there and then in there and then a slight countersink on the end. And then you got your roller, which is just a, you know, fits on there and it's all wore out, but it should be a roll, whatever you want to call it, roll fit on there and it should be straight, but it's all wore out. So there isn't really a lot to them. Fairly simple thing to make. I suppose the trick would be to take a hardness tester and see how hard these materials actually are and, and, and get the appropriate stock to build them out of, but pretty simple. And then there's two, four, five, ten total. Uh, I'll probably just renew all of them while I'm at it. The ones on the, this is one from the right side, it's considerably more worn. The ones on the left side are actually in a lot better, well, besides being broken, in a lot better shape as far as wear-wise, but as long as I'm at it, I'll probably just do all, all new and be done with it. So, you know who you are that's watching this. If you need more information, holler, and I can, if you think you can do it, I'll actually, I'll probably just mail you this, and then you can reverse engineer it and get all the size is just right but let me know if you need any more so last weekend a couple things i didn't film i run a big tap through these two you're looking at the differential upside down all this is on the bottom side uh, cleaned out those taps i took and these 
uh, petcocks for the oil level we had taken all apart. I cleaned them all out and got them working where I think they hopefully will hold oil now. I'm going to, one of these days, I'm going to tip this thing up 90 and fill up the inside of them with a little bit of probably gas and see if they hold. If they can hold gas, you know they're going to hold oil. You know, if not, we'll probably lap them in a little bit more, but they feel pretty good. It's not like something that was used a lot, so they shouldn't be too worn out. We also got some goodies from McMaster Car this week. So, my new lock washers came, and the O-rings came. So, if you remember, this is what I planned on doing, putting the O-ring inside of the lock washer. To keep it centered on the bolt to replicate those old lock washers and I think this is going to work beautifully. I actually put two lock or excuse me o-rings on there because they're thin enough for, to they fit. You put two in there. So I put so there's the one without anything. This is a new lock washer with the O-rings on it, and it keeps it nice and centered, so I'm happy with that. Compared to, that is the old style lock washer. So from the end, it's dang near a perfect match, so I'm really happy about that. The only downside is, when you look at it from the side, the new ones are, of course, flat. The old ones have that little raised edge on the inner side. So it does look slightly different but I can I can live with that once it's all painted it up, it'll be all right. I'll probably do put all the original on one side and all the new on the other, and and if anybody notices out of the show, you get a bonus point for <laughs> notice on the little details. It's like how come the lock washers are different on the one side? <laughs> but do a little update on that. So I, I think that'll work. I'm happy with that. It's a good uh, compromise workaround since I wasn't able to find those original style of lock washers. Um, we got some felt, um, what do you want to call it, uh, seal material, I guess. Um, so that's going to be inserted, focus camera, in like that, and I'll make a piece that goes around the outside all the way and butts up nice there. Um... I think that'll work really good. It seems to be about the right thickness. By the time it's compressed in there, it'll be just a little bit of, um, you know, right on there, a little bit of pressure to keep it, keep it sealed up nice. Um, so I think that'll work. And then, yeah, one second. Okay, back. So all these arbor shims came. I got two different thicknesses. I got 25 thou and a 15 thou packet. Reason being, these are going to be for my shims where those axle collars need to be uh, tightened up. We've talked about this probably way too much. You guys are probably getting bored of hearing about this. But basically, all I have to do is... They're the right OD. They just need to be turned ever so slightly to open up that ID so they're the same size as those collars. And then they'll slip on the shaft there and then you can see that gets that end play into a realistic amount. Just a little bit of, just a little bit of end play like it should be. So on this side, it'll be a 25 thou and on the other side will be, uh, I think I figured 65 or so. Yeah, 65. Two, two 25s and a 15 is what I was figuring. So all those three will be on the other side. And uh, that should solve that problem, hopefully. So I'm going to go over to a buddy's neighbor and buddy's house, uh, maybe tomorrow or something, sometime this weekend, and borrow his lathe and... and open up those ID and get that taken care of. Then I can put those all together. And then 
I'm not sure what next after that. I might, I think I might start working on the transmission here a little bit. I'm thinking, <laughs> I think you all know I couldn't leave well enough alone. I'm thinking I might take this last reverse gear out of here after all and shaft and put it in the press and press it out. It's got to go that way because the, it's actually stepped. Looking in the parts book and the, and the shaft is stepped. It's bigger on this end and it gets smaller where it rides up against that bushing and then from there to this side is smaller. So that gear sits, you know, uh, sets on that on that step on the shaft. That's where it bottoms out, so to speak. So I think if I put it in the press, support it around this really well and press it that way, it should come right out of there and then do the reverse to, to put it back together. Uh, I'll try a little bit, I think, uh, if I can figure out a good setup in the press. But uh, uh, yeah, I guess it'll, it'll start uh, cleaning up some transmission parts because I kind of want to get that cleaned up and put back together so then I could check the play between the pinion gear and the transmission or excuse me the differential gears and see if that all looks good or if I'm gonna have to do any more changing things around it's tough because it's not like a modern differential where you have spacers and whatnot between your bearings where you can shim things and adjust things like any modern differential would be this is not like that this is just all babbited there is no bearings so to speak you know as far as adjusting the the um uh, preload that's what i'm looking for on the bearings and stuff like that uh so there really isn't there really isn't adjustment so to speak uh, i suppose you could put shims and stuff in there but I'm kind of hoping I'll just put it all back together and it's all going to be good <laughs> is what I'm hoping. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. If we got to figure out a plan B, well, that's the story of my life. Figure out a, what to do next if it doesn't work. So I will keep you updated as the weekend progresses. I should get some more done this weekend than I did last weekend. The weather is nice. I might even get this case outside and get that cleaned up while the weather is cooperating. So. Stay tuned. Here we go. I got it set up in the press. Nothing fancy, but a big socket for clearance on the bottom. A big one on top for pressing. And it's coming out real, real easy here. And it's not, not in there very hard at all. Finish getting this apart and then I'll show you what I got. There, it came apart beautifully. No resistance at all. So, I mean, it really wasn't much of a press fit in there at all, really. Probably could have even driven it out with a soft hammer and whatever. But, got the right equipment, you might as well use it. So, pressed it out. So, now it'll be cleaning up these edges of this gear that much easier, too. I can work on it comfortably up on the bench but you can see there's you know those edges are a little bit boogered up so file them all up nice and clean and get all the burrs off of them and make cleaning up the inside of the housing that much easier now without that extra gear and shaft in the way so this is 100 percent empty now except for the bushings in there and those i'll leave because no reason to take them out so yeah Everything is apart. It's just a matter of cleaning and putting back together now. Well, it's starting to go back together. This morning I was over at Tim's house and got the spacers turned down so they're the right size now. I got this left side put back together with its spacer. Just that little bit of in play, so that's looking good. I got all the bolts in, no washers or nothing, just just in there and snugged up. 
I had taken this final drive back off to get the drip tray back in because I couldn't get it in because it goes underneath that brake pulley. So I took the final drive off, got that put back in, installed, that's in for goods, uh, sealed up. Put the final drive back on there again with all the bolts snugged up. Um, and then I think I'm going to finish cleaning up this axle here first, wire wheel it up. Get that all cleaned up and then I'm going to put this side back together and see how the spacing worked out with the end play and then move on to the next thing. But I think it's time for a little bit of lunch. Check back later. All right, making lots of progress. This axle all cleaned up. Uh, I got the keeper washers and bolts all cleaned up, threads cleaned out, bolt cleaned up on both sides. I got this axle back in with the washers, same thing. Nice little end play, you know, maybe th five thou or so, just like I was aiming for. So that's looking good. So all of this assembly is uh, pretty good, I think, as far as play goes. Um, I ain't gonna final put it together until I get the transmission figured out and check all the backlash and whatnot with that but if that all looks good then i'll take it all back apart once more uh, clean it all up really good and put it together for the final time then with the lock washers and seal up the threads on the bolts because those are three bo through bolts into the uh, oil there so yeah i think i'll start cleaning up the transmission now but yeah all this is cleaned up and done and it's looking good Making progress. Yeah, we're finally moving on from the differential. We got to the transmission. Got the transmission case, good portion cleaned up today. Not 100% done yet, but it's looking pretty decent. Going to clean up all, a little bit more on the inside. And Hopefully come out tomorrow and maybe, oh, well, maybe the goal will be to get that cleaned up for the weekend. And from here forward, it'll be starting putting transmission back together. So that'll be a nice little change of pace. Something, work on something different for a while. I'm kind of tired of looking at that part of it. Want something different. Start cleaning up some gears and that should actually go pretty darn quick there. Those will clean up easy because they're not rusty. Just degrease them and deburr them and... Start putting things back together, so that'll be good. Well, maybe see you tomorrow. It's supper time now. Okay, so I'm gonna change gears here a little bit. <laughs> maybe pun intended, just slightly. Change gears, ha, huh? funny, funny. Uh, I'm gonna work on this shaft, get it cleaned up a little bit. Uh, because my thought process is, this is the main shaft of the transmission, you know, your clutch, runs on this spline here. Um, I don't want to put this all together, put the transmission all back together, and then run into issues with the spline. Because, if you can see there, there is some significant wear in the center portion of the spline where that was riding. I mean, it's it's... I don't know if it's enough to be concerned about, but it has caught my attention. And if it's something that I need to address, obviously now is the time to address it. Because it's a lot easier to work on this while this shaft is out. And when it's all put together, and I have to take it apart again if I need to fix it. How it's going to be, or could be fixed, I'm not really sure. If you people have some ideas or suggestions, I am all ears. Because making this whole new shaft would be cost prohibitive. Because you got the spline here, you got spline here for the sliding gear, you have a bearing fit, you have threads, you have a square end. I mean, there's a lot of machining involved 
to make that shaft over again. So I don't think that's really probably a realistic option. I am wondering if, and this is all assuming that this wear is, is an issue. You know, maybe it's not, maybe it's okay. There again, give me your opinions. Um, could a guy have this spray welded and just remachine the splines? Um, would that be an option? I, I don't really know. I'm thinking that would be. Um, I don't know. I just I, I'm not really an expert on on this. So yeah, I'm interesting to hear interested to hear you guys' opinions. I'll get it cleaned up here a little bit more and take a little bit closer look at it. What really stinks is that I didn't plan ahead enough to bring any of the clutch parts out here to North Dakota with me. They're all back in Wisconsin with the rest of the tractor. So I can't fit that clutch plate and stuff on there to see how how worn is that on there, you know, how much play is there. And then that if I'm thinking about how that all works correctly, you got the flywheel will be on this side. You got a clutch friction disc. There's a cast center plate, another friction disc, and then I think there's like a rear plate, and then that, you know, like a spring and stuff to put pressure on all of that. And then I'm not exactly even sure how it engages and disengages. I think it's something with that rear plate. I'm still working on researching that and figuring that out talking with other Alice owners here and figuring out how that all operates and whatnot. But anyway, what I was getting at is that, that I think this is where that center cast plate runs, I'm guessing. And what I'm getting at is, is that that's cast iron. So if that's internal spline on that part is worn, there again, fixing that is tricky at best. Um, so hypothetically, say that was okay, you could just put this shaft back to specs and you're good to go. If that plate is worn, I don't know if a guy could say, I don't know, I'm not sure what the best option would be there. There again, give me your, give me your ideas and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, I think I'll start today by cleaning up this, take this apart, clean this up, and maybe even clean up a few more transmission parts and that kind of stuff. I don't know. I should clean up that, finish cleaning up that transmission housing too. But I kind of wanted to get this clutch ball going and uh, keep that rolling so I don't hose myself in the long run here. You always got to kind of try to think two steps ahead of the process here. So I'll check back with you later. Well, I took the easy way out today. I didn't feel like cleaning up the housing any. So I've been degreasing parts instead. Got a whole bunch of these cleaned up. I still got to deburr the gears and whatever, but I got them all degreased. Um, so here's a better shot of that end of that spline now that I got it cleaned up. You can still see that there's wear on there on the, the drive side, I suppose. It's rotating that way, so all the pressure was on that side. Uh, when you take a caliber to it, it's about 20 thou wear, you know, from the unworn part to that part, it's about 20 thou thinner. Um, so yeah, it's, I guess I won't really be able to move forward with this and know until I get the other part that fits on here and see how loose is it, you know, is it, maybe this, you know, it's bad, but you know, maybe it's not worth addressing. I don't know. It's still kind of up in the air at this point. I think about that one, get the other half here and check it out, but. Yeah, I got that reverse gear and shaft clean out. There's your shifting rail and shifting fork cleaned up. This pinion drive and gear and the opposite bearing. Uh, 
This, I might take this apart too, just to clean up, because this is collar is on here. Uh, you know, potentially there might be gunk in there because it's not a precision fit there. It's, I suppose it tightens up once everything is on there, nut on and compressed together, but I might put this in the press and take this gear off just a little peace of mind, clean up inside of there and whatever. Oh uh, yeah, so just a little update for now. Okay, mental note. Nut washer casting number on the outside. So I can put this back together in the right order. And, and then because this shaft, I believe, is the same on both ends once this gear is removed, I put a dimple mark on the spinner end just for a note to put it back together the same way. I don't know if it makes a difference or not. But just there again, a mental note. Well, there, that's pretty good progress for the weekend, I think. We've got all the transmission internal stuff cleaned up. It's got a little, little bit of final cleaning and deburring, and I think things will be ready, pretty much ready to go back together. So that'll be nice. And like I said, I got a final finish, final cleaning the inside of the housing there. We'll be making some progress. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So, we'll, uh, I think we're going to call it a week. I'll put this video together and try to get it posted up here tonight, and I'll hopefully see you guys again next weekend. Thanks for watching.